It's pretty clear you guys enjoyed it when I did this the first time, so I figured why not give myself something else to do. I'm getting every single achievement in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, ranging from really easy to oh god I seriously need to do that? Once again, this is only possible with the Retro Achievements website, which provides me with a set of 34 different achievements to obtain. Aside from the expected ones like Get to This Level and Get the Chaos Emeralds, Sonic 2 in particular adds some achievements that will definitely require at least a couple more play playthroughs of the game. I'm not exactly thrilled about that prospect, but hey, I guess I just gotta work a little harder for it this time, huh? This time, I'm writing the intro to this video before I actually stream the challenge, the VOD of which I'll provide in the description below. I'm definitely expecting this to be way harder than Sonic 1 was, and I might even scream really loudly a few times by the end, but I can't imagine this being beyond my ability with enough effort. So, without further ado, let's start from the top, shall we? Yep, unlike Sonic 1, this challenge took multiple days to complete, due in part to the fact that getting every achievement requires more than one playthrough. I can already tell I'm in for a great time. The first order of business is to focus solely on getting the Chaos Emeralds to get that pain in the ass out of the way. In order to do this, I pretty much have to play as either Sonic or Tails by themselves. If you play the special stages with Sonic and Tails, not only is the amount of rings you have to get increased, but keeping your rings in general is made way harder by how Tails' AI works. When you move Sonic, Tails has a significant delay to when he moves, meaning that you have to react to any spikes that are coming well in advance so that Tails doesn't get hit by them and make you lose your rings. And trust me, with how fucking ridiculous some of these upcoming special stages are, you'll need every ring you can get your hands on. Let's discuss how the special stage system in this game works. Like Sonic 1, you need to get 50 rings in order to access a special stage. However, rather than needing to get to the end of the level with 50 rings, you instead activate a checkpoint and jump into the stars above it to enter. This sounds like a better system in theory, and in some ways, it absolutely is. The problem is that Sonic 2 for the Sega Genesis is not a well-designed video game. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say Sonic 2's level design is fucking terrible, and is a major factor in why I don't like this game. The checkpoints in Sonic 2 are placed so haphazardly and with so little care that you'd think the level designers blindfolded themselves and threw darts at a picture of the level to determine where they'd be placed. In levels like Chemical Plant and Aquatic Ruin, some pathways have three checkpoints in them while others have absolutely none. In Emerald Hill, some checkpoints are so high up in the air that if you didn't think to follow the very top path, you'd need a degree in theoretical physics to work out how to launch Sonic up to them. Meanwhile, some levels like Oil Ocean and Metropolis throw so many gotcha moments at you that even if this system was completely flawless and had a fair amount of checkpoints in them, you'd still struggle to keep even 10 rings all the way to one of the checkpoints. Once you finally limit to a special stage, guess what? These special stages are an affront to God. The first few of them aren't that bad, all things considered, but once you get to special stage 5 onwards and the gloves come off, you are going to suffer. Controlling Sonic in this tube is like trying to control a stick of butter in a hot frying pan, and some of the bomb placements in these later special stages are absolutely abhorrent. Even with liberal use of pause buffering to make sure I always knew what was coming up, and even after pulling up a goddamn map to know what's coming coming up ahead, these bombs would still find some way to ruin my day. And of course, when it comes time for special stages 5 to 7, the room for error is extremely thin, where one mistake will make you miss the ring requirement entirely. You can't miss too many rings, and you can't hit any more than a single bomb before you're better off just throwing the controller away and giving up on video games entirely. And you know, this all wouldn't be that bad. I'd be perfectly content with readying myself for a fair, reasonable challenge that will take some time time and effort on my part if it weren't for two key aspects that completely kill any fun this would give me. Firstly, if you fuck up and get kicked out of the special stage, there is no option to retry. Okay, whatever. Sonic 1 did the same thing. Who cares? Well, secondly, once you leave the special stage, the checkpoint takes your rings. The checkpoint takes your rings. That's right, time to crawl through the entire fucking level again, going through the exact same process I just detailed over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until you've beaten your head against the wall enough times 
to finally win. If you need any reason why I don't like Sonic 2, this is why. Every single one of these tiny little inconveniences come together in the perfect mixture of pain and misery to make completing the game's ultimate objective a complete and utter nightmare. That's not good design. That's dickish absolute bullshit design. But enough of that. I don't want this video to be nothing but dunking on a game everybody seems to like, so let's move on. Frankly, aside from detailing how the special stage system works, there's honestly not that much more to say about how this playthrough went. I mean, I could just include a compilation of all the jank that happened, including stuff like this. Ooh, give me a second. Wham up! What I did it! Fuck? Woo! Or how about this stupid shit that happened after I got the Chaos Emeralds? <laughs> Google Play version, all right. What? What job? Fuck! Just happened! Or how about here, where- Okay, fine, I'll stop. Like I said, since this playthrough was focused on the Chaos Emeralds, I didn't really get many other achievements aside from the ones for beating each level. After getting the Chemical Madness achievement for getting the Chemical Plant Zone, once reaching the boss, I bounce on him eight times without touching the ground to obtain the achievement, The Floor is Lava. Following that, I get Hold Your Breath for making it to a Aquatic Ruin, Gamble 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 for making it to Casino Night Zone, Enjoy the View for making it to Hilltop Zone, then after one more special stage of despair, I can breathe a sigh of relief as I get the 7th Chaos Emerald and get the Super Sonic Style achievement. After that, I just get through the rest of the levels while trying my best not to die. This gives me Creepy Caverns, Pollution Solution, City Slicker, Ready for Takeoff, Airborne Attacker, and That's No Moon. Once I make it to Death Egg, since I have have plenty of lives to spare, I rush my way through, beating both of the bosses as fast as possible rather than using careful strats that I'll have to use later. This not only gives me the up to the challenge achievement for beating the game, but also the quick dismantling achievement for beating Death Egg in under two minutes. And with that, the first set of achievements were obtained and I wrapped up day one. Overall, while getting the Chaos Emeralds did pretty much tank any enjoyment I would have had playing the earlier levels, there was a certain thrill to playing the rest that was wasn't really present in Sonic 1. That doesn't make it good though, absolutely not. Let's move on to day two. The plan for day two was to get every achievement that could be obtained with level select, just to make sure I didn't have anything else to try and do when I was going for the few bigger achievements by the end. I didn't succeed, and you'll see why later. And also, let's just ignore the fact that every day past day one, I keep forgetting to turn on the timer because I'm really forgetful. Cool? Cool. Anyway, let's go in order by zone. The Comfort Zone achievement requires you to beat all of Emerald Hill without defeating any badniks or dying. You'd think, judging by how much trouble the Underachiever achievement in Sonic 1 was, that this would be pretty hard. But actually, a lot of the enemies in Emerald Hill, like the Monkeys and Buzz Bombers, are higher up and thus much easier to dodge. It only took a couple tries before I beat up Robotnik and claim the achievement. The next one, however, was a doozy. Ring Wrangler 1 requires that you get the perfect bonus in Emerald Hill Act 1, which means that I had to get every single ring in the level. Ring boxes don't count towards this, thankfully, so I get at least a little mercy, but good god I hate these kinds of achievements. Pulling up a map and meticulously scouring every inch of a level for tiny little MacGuffins that could be in really easy to miss spots is, surprisingly, not very fun. I mean, fuck, at least Shadow the Hedgehog is designed around you doing just that. This is just painful. And my my god, this set of achievements floating way up in the air could go sit on it and swivel. Because getting them all required that I learned something about this game I had previously forgotten about. See, when you hit a diagonal spring in this game, pressing left or right on the d-pad actually slows you down. So the correct way to get these achievements is to jump on the spring, and then just not press anything until you get what you need. Now I understand why holding back on the spring would slow you down, but why would holding away from the spring slow you down so much? Just Sonic 2 logic, I guess. So after spending over a half hour retrying this level because of that dumb mechanic making me run out of time, I finally get every ring and get the achievement. At least I didn't have to risk losing these rings making it to the end of the level. But the grind isn't over yet. Oh, not by a long shot. You're Too Slow requires that you beat a level in under 25 seconds, the obvious candidate for this being Emerald Hill Act 1. This achievement requires perfection, because of course it does. Not getting these speed shoes 
injuries, getting hit even once, hitting a wall more than once, and various other small mistakes like the physics physicking slightly differently than last time will result in your abject failure. It doesn't help that I'm just not good at speedrunning 2D Sonic games in general, so this probably took me a good 20 minutes to nail down the route. Do as big a spin dash as you can at the start because this is the only one you're gonna wanna do. Jump right after this ramp and try to land either after or right on one of the fish. Stay on the upper path, jump when you reach this diagonal spring, and be ready to jump immediately after to clear these spikes. Hold back your speed just slightly though so you can then land on these speed shoes. Hold right until you launch off this ramp, then start tapping right ever so slightly. You want to land on top of this loop, then do a big jump to continue. You should land close to this ramp, upon which you want to either run up the ramp and tap right again, or just jump over it entirely and continue onwards. Either way, you should hit the checkpoint and go through a couple loops. Hold right through it all and run off the ramp. Then hope that it sends you up to the top path safely. From there, you should be all set. Make sure to jump over this spring right past the corkscrew and then bank your achievement. There's definitely a faster way to do this, but this is what ended up working for me. Don't look back requires that you beat all of Emerald Hill without pressing left. This is pretty easy considering that most of Emerald Hill is designed around holding right and not having to slow down for much. But I ended up having to do this achievement three times. Why? Earlier, I activated the level select code so that I wouldn't have to go through the tedium of putting in the code a second time. But for some ungodly reason, this achievement won't trigger if you have level select on. Despite this achievement being in the literal first zone of the game, and also despite me not even using level select to get the achievement because that wouldn't make any sense at all. I get you don't want people just skipping to act two and ignoring a part of the achievement, but then why does the achievement look for having level select on instead of just looking for if you visit the level select screen itself? I don't know, maybe one of you retro achievements wizards can help me out on this one. But after restarting the game and not using the code, the achievement triggered just fine, so it was only a minor annoyance at the end of the day. Next, I beat Emerald Hill Act 1 without jumping or using the spin dash to get the Groundhog achievement. It was really easy, so I'm just gonna laugh at the pun instead. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Now that we're finally done with the Emerald Hill Zone achievements, for now, we're at Chemical Plant Zone Act 2 for the Robotnik Sea Stars achievement. By spin dash jumping up past this wall, I can eventually get to this invincibility monitor. Then I simply have to run to Robotnik and hit him one time to get the achievement. Feels good to have this many easy achievements after the hellish Ring Wrangler one. And I'm especially glad I enjoyed the break while I did because it's time for Ring Wrangler 2. Getting every single ring in Aquatic Ruin Act 1 is arguably even more annoying than Emerald Hill. Thanks almost almost exclusively to these logs. Almost every single one of these logs has three rings in them, something the map failed to convey to me. So imagine my confusion when I'm three rings short of the total with no visible rings left to collect. Combine that with this level size being way bigger than Emerald Hill, the fact that I had to be aware of any sudden gotcha moments at all times so I didn't lose my rings, and the fact that I'm running on a 10 minute time limit, I ended up getting so lost and overwhelmed that I just looked up a video and followed it step by step. Being 100% honest here, I was getting a little bit tired of Sonic 2 at this point, and having to do some of these challenges in a game that I already didn't really like was starting to wear me out. So if I end up skipping games like Sonic CD or Sonic 3D Blast, which I also don't like, then you know why. Anyway, after a good 30 minutes of misery, I finally get the achievement. That should be the last one of those Ring Wrangler achievements where I'm struggling to even find the rings. I hope. Next, I had to do basically the exact opposite, beating Aquatic Ruin Act 1 without getting any rings at all. This isn't really all that bad, it's mainly finding the optimal route to take that's going to consume a lot of your time. The bottom path has the least amount of rings on it, but entering it immediately is a no-go because this set of rings looks really hard to jump over, while this one seems to be straight up impossible to dodge. There's an opportunity to enter the bottom path a bit further up, but until then I had to weave between the different paths in the most careful way I could find. 
behind. To start off, move carefully to the right and take your time so that this arrow doesn't hit you. Land on the left of this log and take out the badnik, then you're free to slowly go right some more. Dodge this booster here and jump over the badnik, making sure not to fall into the bottom path. This right here is the hardest jump you'll have to do because it's rather precise. You want to do two jumps here. Start with a small jump onto the end of this curve here to get some momentum, then do a big jump to both jump over the rings and under the wall. I got lucky and somehow clipped through a part of it, but that usually doesn't happen, so just keep practicing until you get it. You're then good to carefully go right without much action until you reach the checkpoint. Coming up ahead is a loop with a few rings that are unavoidable if you use it, so you need to dodge the loop by jumping onto a different path. The problem is that if you try to do that, sometimes this can happen. Jump, Jump up here. Tails, where even am I right now? <laughs> So be aware of that little lapse in programming and jump from the base of the slope up to the top of these stairs. Go back to the left and grab the shield, then continue to the left and drop down to the bottom path using this platform. From here, there isn't really anything outlandish you'll have to do. Continue to the right very slowly, grabbing air bubbles at every opportunity you can and taking every jump very carefully. Some of the slopes down here will shorten your jump and potentially make you jump forward into rings if you aren't careful. So keep that in mind as you progress. Once you make it to the booster here, you're completely safe to hold right to the end of the level and get the funds running dry achievement. I hope you didn't think that achievement was too hard to get, because immediately after is a no ring achievement that's even more difficult. But first I got the big bucks achievement by getting a jackpot. Very easy and not worth talking about. Anyway, gambling intervention. Complete Casino Night Zone Act 1 without collecting any rings. Now, I don't know if you noticed this about Casino Night, but this place is in fact a casino. And unlike real life casinos, this place is really itching to give you rings at every opportunity. Just look at the map of this place, Jesus fucking Christ. If it isn't the several slot machines that'll get you when you accidentally fall in and get rings just from RNG alone, it's all the ring filled tunnels and shafts that almost every single path will force you into at some point. The bottom path is thwarted halfway through by this elevator that takes you down to a tunnel that makes me sick just looking at it, and the middle path lulls you into a false sense of security before all your hopes and dreams are destroyed by 19 disgusting rings. Thus, the only viable path is the very top path, but your execution has to be on point at all times. One wrong move will send you down into a pinball table that you have no hope of escaping from. After almost an hour of attempts, this is how I did it. After going above and then under these two sets of rings, we're already at a precise part. You want to do a small jump here, one that's just low enough to go under these rings, but also just high enough to make it to this platform. Dodge the speed shoes and jump to the conveyor belt, before jumping on exactly the fourth bumper in this set to make it to the other side. The third bumper will also work, but I find it's a lot less consistent and might bump you into the table above. Make a big jump at the end of this slope to clear this table, but be ready to jump immediately afterwards. For some reason, this platform will keep you curled up into a ball, and if you don't jump in time, you'll end up hitting the ring box. Jumping immediately will let you clear it. Ride this platform up and jump on the red spring, holding forward only when you pass this bumper to the right. Up next is the most luck-dependent part of this challenge. Hitting this flipper is not really an option, as there are too many rings up above to risk doing it. However, these bumpers down here are woefully inconsistent and just do whatever they want sometimes. You can somewhat control your bouncing by holding the jump button to make you go higher, but sometimes it just doesn't matter what you do. I eventually came up with a strategy where I bounce on the center of one of them, then aim myself to the edge of another and keep my bounce low, before bouncing high to make it to the other side. Grab this shield just in case, jump across one of these green snake platforms, then do a big jump off the second to land on the edge of these bumpers, bouncing low to dodge these rings up ahead. Enjoy the calm moment here as you slowly move forward, then jump onto the next platform and grab the checkpoint. Do a big jump and hold forward to make it past these green things. Then it's time for possibly the scariest jump. There are two ways to do it, but one of them involves taking a chance on this flipper to launch you up in a specific way, and that can be really unreliable. Instead, bounce on the top right side of these two bumpers, sailing clear over the third one, and hopefully hitting the top of this bumper down here. Then carefully bounce across to the safe point, but don't celebrate just yet, you've got one more difficult jump 
to make. Ride the blue platform and wait for a bit until the platform and this blue bumper line up just right. You need to jump high enough to fly over the rings up above, so stay right here and wait for the perfect opportunity to hit the very top of the bumper. Once you do that, you're home free. Walk onto the flipper and do not touch the jump button. Fall straight down, hanging the tiniest bit to the left until you hit this flipper. Fall straight down that one too and bounce low, aiming for the next flipper to the right and falling down some more. Be absolutely sure you don't hit this red flipper down here, do a small spin dash to the right, and scream out in victory as you run to the right and finally get the achievement. <laughs> Yay! Then take a look at the achievement list, realize you forgot one of the easier achievements in Aquatic Ruin, then play through both acts without touching the water. Trust me, it's really trivial. Just follow the top path in both levels and effortlessly get the Aquaphobic Ruin achievement in one try. That's where I decided to end the second day. And wow, some of these achievements were a trial. I haven't even done some of the achievements I think will be the hardest ones. I have a feeling that by the end of this, I'm going to utterly despise Sonic 2 and all it stands for. But I guess we'll see see, won't we? Today, the plan was to finish up the level select achievements, then focus on getting the Chaos Emerald Hill achievement. Let's see how I do. My first stop was Hilltop Zone Act 2 to get the King of the Hill achievement, which requires you to get four extra lives in said act. In order to do this, you need to get at least 200 rings and then grab the two life boxes across the level. The problem? Individually, each path doesn't give you enough rings to reach the necessary total, so you have to bumble around on the bottom path for a while before backtracking and going up to the top path. I figured this out by just watching a video on it because I'm a lazy bastard that hates figuring things out for myself. The first extra life box is up at the top path in this wall, but make sure you don't fall too fast or else Sonic will miss the opening entirely and you have to make the climb of shame back up to it. The second life box is the last thing you should grab to get the achievement. It's in this corner of the bottom path, not too far away from where the two paths converge. Once you get 200 rings, you don't have to worry about losing them since you already got the two extra lives you need from it. So throw as much caution to the wind as you need to in order to get the last life box and obtain the achievement. Up next is Ring Wrangler 3, which is by far the easiest of the three Ring Wrangler achievements. Sky Chase Zone is the target this time, so you only have 67 rings to worry about. Yeah, the controls can be a tiny bit stiff, but it's not that bad once you get used to them. But ah, you forget, this is Sonic 2, and Sonic 2 tends to be really quirky sometimes. I ended up reaching the end of the level a couple times missing two rings. It didn't make any sense to me because I grabbed every single ring I could see, so where the hell could the other two rings be? Well, as it turns out, three of the rings you need are hidden behind these clouds. Not only that, but the sparkles the rings make when you collect them are the same fucking color as these clouds. So I didn't even know I was collecting them unless I was looking directly at the ring counter. Why aren't these rings in the four? ground like the other 64 are! Because Sonic 2 is a great video game that is well designed and better than its prequel in every way possible. Anyway, don't forget those three rings, don't miss any of the others, and you'll get the achievement no problem. Next up is Flawless Fortress, requiring you to beat Wing Fortress without taking any damage or using Super Sonic. This one really isn't that hard, up until the boss fight, which I can imagine would give a lot of people a hard time. For me though, I've had a lot of practice fighting this type of bullet hell boss, so once I reached it, I beat it on the first try. If I were to give some advice, don't rush it. Mainly stay on the top of the platforms as much as you can, and don't get greedy when it's time to hit the laser. With some patience, you'll hit the laser enough times to get the achievement. And that is the last of the easy achievements. From now on, all I've got left are the long, arduous marathons to tackle. Starting with... Chaos Emerald Hill. Collect all seven Chaos Emeralds in Emerald Hill Zone. Holy shit. What a fucking pain in the ass. I detailed pretty much all of my problems with the horrible special stage system earlier, but now combine all of that with a couple more fun restrictions and you've got a special little section of hell cut out just for you. Emerald Hill Zone has eight different checkpoints throughout the two acts and each of them must be hit in order to even have a remote chance of getting this achievement. Why? 
In Sonic 2, let's say you're in Act 2 of Emerald Hill. You hit this first checkpoint here and complete the special stage. Then after that, you aren't able to find any checkpoints until this one up here. If you hit that checkpoint before any of the ones before it, those other checkpoints will be activated automatically with no chance to use them to enter a special stage. Do this with the wrong set of checkpoints and that's a reset. Gee, it's almost as if checkpoints weren't designed with entering special stages in mind, huh? And let me emphasize something I just said before. There are only eight checkpoints in Emerald Hill. Eight. When you're doing all of these special stages, you can mess up a special stage once. That's it. Mess up more than that and you have to do the entire process again. May I remind you that set process consists of tiptoeing through the stage, gathering 50 rings while trying not to get jumped, then making damn sure you enter these checkpoints in a very specific order, all with the pressure building up that if you mess up these unfair, poorly designed special stages more than once, you gotta spend the 20 minutes it'll take to do all of it over and over and over until you finally get it right. Did you guys know that Sonic 2 is a great video game that is well designed and better than its prequel in every way possible? I don't really have a strategy I can tell you about for this achievement, nor can I say I had some spectacular story full of memorization, Herculean effort, and a glorious well-owned victory, because I don't. I used a map every step of the way, be it for finding every checkpoint in order, or for the special stages to find out where every bomb and set of rings are placed. Combine that with me basically walking through Emerald hill to make sure I didn't get hit too much, and you have what's practically the only way to do this achievement. At least with achievements like gambling intervention, theory crafting the perfect route to avoid all the rings had a semblance of fun to it. This is just raw, unfiltered mastery with no room for personality, and that's why I don't really have much to say for this. After almost an hour and a half of grinding this stupid achievement out, I finally got it. And yeah, it was satisfying, but it was also torture. I hope you could see why I don't really like this game now. Okay, as soon as these bombs pass, go to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the hardest achievement in the game, I hope. Oh, yay! Yes! Anyway, enough being a Debbie Downer. Even after getting this achievement, I wasn't quite done today. I had another goal in mind, and I got to work on it. I went for the Stuck in the Past achievement, which required me to complete the entire game without spin dashing. In addition, I did this with Tails to also get the Miles Ahead achievement for beating the game with Tails alone. And if I played my cards right, I might have even been able to get the West Side Island Champion achievement for completing the game without dying. Most of this playthrough was spent trying to keep my muscle memory from taking over. There are so many instances in this game where every fiber of my brain tells me to just spin dash here. It was kind of maddening. Thankfully, I only really fell for it twice before I got a really good third run. Pretty much every level aside from a couple went without a hitch. Metropolis Zone Act 2, however, can go screw one. Firstly, the level design is probably some of the worst this entire franchise has ever seen, with Badnik design so abhorrent that it caused this to happen. Mm, <laughs> I did. Oh, no! Give me rings. I need rings, I need rings, I need rings, I need rings, I need rings! No! Yep, there goes the Deathless achievement. That badnik alone caused me to have to stream this challenge for another while. So thanks, asshole. Secondly, this bit near the end of the level is just outright broken. Never mind this jump that goes from a pretty simple momentum check into a living nightmare without the spin dash, because right up at the top here is this switch. Now, I don't know what the developers were cooking with this one, but when you hit this switch, sometimes Sometimes nothing will happen. So much nothing will happen, in fact, that you'll run out of time and die because you're locked in this room until the switch decides it's ready to work. Sometimes the switch will only work if you press it twice. Sometimes it works simply if you stay on it for a couple seconds. It's a complete fucking crapshoot. A great thing to be when one of my achievements requires I don't run out of time and die. Guys, did you hear the news? Apparently Sonic 2 is a great video game that is well designed and better than its prequel in every way possible. Sonic Sonic 1 didn't do shit like this, guys. All right, come on, big bucks, big bucks, no whammies. Why? 
Anyway, I did eventually figure out how it worked and planned around it, but I shouldn't need a goddamn strategy just to hit a fucking switch. After that though, the rest of the playthrough went pretty well. Sky Chase actively discourages spin dashing lest you get killed for it. Wing Fortress consists of a lot of flat ground and really easy jumps afterwards. And Death Egg only really required me to switch my strategy up slightly. Since I can't spin dash on Silver Sonic to cheese him, I just carefully jumped into him while being aware of his attack pattern. Then for the Death Egg robot, I played mostly risky to cut down on the amount of his attacks I had to avoid. I made him fly down on one side of the screen, then ran to the left to avoid this punching attack. Then after that, I just hit him at every chance I could to finish him off. Yee, that's miles yeah, ahead. That's the miles one. Okay. That's the miles one. Okay, okay, okay. Yes! Yeah! yeah. Woo! That run, with a few key exceptions like the one switch in Metropolis Act 2, is probably the most fun I've had with this game in a long time. I felt pretty reinvigorated, especially after getting both achievements with very few issues. With that, there's now only one achievement left, and I planned on getting it the next day I streamed. I'm still writing this before doing that stream, so I hope everything goes well. well, well. Metropolis Zone and Death Egg are going to be the two main problem points. Death Egg, you get no rings, and if you get hit by any of the two final bosses once, you die. We can't do that. So if something happens and I get hit, we gotta start the whole game over. So this is gonna be the ultimate test of how much I've actually absorbed knowledge about this game. It says you're on chemical plant. Well, time to reset. Well, and <laughs> 10 count one, baby. We are doing so well. Hey, guys, Didn't... do you know how well this I was rolled up into a ball. What do you I was... mean? Tails, please mess up. It'll be funny. What do you, what do you even need Tails for? Uh, I'm going to use him for a couple <clears throat> bosses. Ah. So basically, we are just taking a shower because we're both Okay, back we go. We Fucking fa I'm turning off Tails. Yay. We have to do it all over again. Tails is your friend. This guys. is... I'm able to do this effortlessly. Any other time. The moment that death is important and I shouldn't die is the moment that everything goes to shit. There's no recovery. Um, it's so over. I have no rings. Where are the rings, game? It's time. Okay, there is ground down here. Please tell me there are rings. Uh, I'm gonna oh tip. No. It's it's down on one knee. Oh. We does. We have oh. to do it all over again. Hooray. There's death core. Why did that not count? Why don't I have a ring? Oh God! Again, anxious watching this. Yeehaw, gamers. All right, I'm cowboy. Because where I messed up is where I didn't have rings. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. Yeah, now we have rings, and the part I messed up was where I didn't have rings. Uh, John, are you okay? No, this is my first attempt Would at death. Would you rather be distracted by us goobers, or? I don't know. Uh, I don't know, honestly. Oh. Oh. oh my god. Well, I'm going to play multiverses. And John, uh, see you around. It's a sea of petroleum. I was just deleting random files and suddenly, uh, there goes Dolphin. Oops. Whoa. Uh oh. Oops. Maybe you have to. God really said, fuck you, play Sonic 2 again. I thought Sonic ate them all in Sonic 1. What? Okay, I don't have rings, but we're right at the end of the level. No. Attempt, attempt 10. Can you guys That's... hear me okay right now? Yes. Yeah, okay, no, you got better. Okay, good. All right, cool. I hate those stupid ah! steel blocks because they... Uh-oh, oh, 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 I'm dead. <laughs>
I can spin dash to get the first four hits in. Then after four hits, I go to the left. The safe way to do it is to not even attempt to attack him until he does his little booster attack. He does one attack over you. He does two attacks under you. And then he does an attack over you while shooting that. Once he does the shooting one, you're all set to go. Oh God, I'm shaking so hard. Please, activate the achievement for the love of God! Yes! 17 hours! That's not true. <laughs> it's over! I fucking did it. It took a lot of anger, anxiety, and shit, I even fucking cried after I lost that one attempt in Death Egg. But it's done. I mastered Sonic 2. I think it's safe to say that after doing all this, it's going to be a long ass time before I ever want to touch this game again. You might say that it wasn't a great idea to invest myself in getting every achievement in a game that I already don't like. And yeah, you're right. But Counterpoint, it sure made for great content, didn't it? Though now I'm definitely not touching Sonic CD for a while because guess what? I don't really like that game either. Sorry, Sonic CD fans. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm terrible at YouTube outros and I seriously need to rest after all this. I'll see you guys next time for Sonic 3 and Knuckles.